Hi, you. So I've been making videos for a while now, but I've given given very little information about myself um, during that time. So given the nature of this video, I thought now would be a good time to sort of um, give you a bit more of a background on myself. So I'll start before um, I started school, but um, I started school when I was five years old. Um, so before I was five, I, I went through a period of being teased. Um, and the teasing centered around my masculinity. Um, and then um, starting school, um, first couple of years, I went through a period <coughs> sorry, of um, having unwanted attention, basically. Um, I had to wear glasses. Um, I had a, a lazy eye, or I have a lazy eye. And the, um, the, the way they sort of um, dealt with that was to put a patch on one of the lenses. Uh, and you know what it's like, anything that sort of makes you different draws unwanted attention. And you know, unless you're actually equipped to be able to, to handle that unwanted attention, it can um, turn quite, you know, depressing for want of a better word, amongst other things. So yeah, that was me. Um, and I think together with that, and possibly the teasing earlier before school, or before I started school, um, I had a, a period of speech therapy. But I say I, I got I got no um, memories of, of the teasing whatsoever. But it, I, I do know it happened. Um, so moving on, um, and we're moving on now to when I started senior school. Uh, and in senior school, everybody seemed to know I was gay before I did, because you know everybody's there sort of commenting, or a lot of people are commenting. Um, but my perception, um, my family treated me the same as everybody else. I interacted with my brothers the same way everybody else would. Um, and. The other thing is I, I'm attracted to a very specific body type as well. Uh, and the type of body type I go for is overweight guys. Um, and the, the average guy does nothing for me whatsoever. He could have the most handsome face, as some might perceive, and it makes no odds to me whatsoever, no effect whatsoever. Uh, and back in the 80s, because we're talking back in the 80s here, the, you know, overweight guys were um, few and far between, really. So any kind of inklings that you know somebody might have, you know, if if it sort of becomes a pattern, um, we're quickly dismissed because I say you know overweight guys were few and far between, and even then you know you know it's like you know you've got a specific body type, you, even then within that body type you don't find every single one of them attractive, um, so I say any kind of inkling it was quickly dismissed and my family treated me the same as anybody else would be treated. Uh, I, I just felt that, you know, I was, I was the same as everybody else. Even though there were sort of like, um, yeah, but, but what the remarks and the bullying, you know, you, you're always feeling less than them simply because you're made to feel that way. Um, but then, you know, there comes a time then when things do become obvious and you, you can't sort of dismiss things any further um, when it's there sort of like blatantly in front of your nose. And then you've got to, you know, process and, and deal with it at that point. Um, and for me, um, that was after I, I finished school um, and I, I, after I'd done um, a year of YTS. Uh, I'm now unemployed. I got... Um, more time to sort of you know think within myself, uh, and there was a, there was a lot to process. Um, you, you got all the um, the stigma. Um, you know you, you're made to feel less than, but you know at the time I I just shrugged it off because well, no that's not me. But obviously you know the the words still take their effect. You know there's still you know any kind of negative remark, um, anything that makes you feel. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Um, yeah, anything that makes you feel unaccepted, um, it's going to take its, its toll, it's going to take its effect. And then you're sort of like consciously thinking, oh, you got to make extra effort. 
Um, so yeah, it's not good. So yeah, I got more time on my hands than I, I would probably um, want to have. So I'm there trapped in my thoughts, processing all, all the, um, the stigma, the stereotyping that was going on um, you know, through my peers and also through the media at the time and thinking, you know, where, where do I fit into all of this? Uh, it's a lot to process. Um, I'm there sort of thinking about you know, all, all this um, camp um, stereotyping, which, which was very sort of prominent at the time, doesn't define me as, you know, I, you know, I don't relate to that. Even though, you know, I thought to myself, well, you know, that could be one way forward. I could um, act camp and then, you know, make it obvious. And then from a socialising point of view, then, you know, it probably makes things easier in some respects. Um, and then obviously you got other sort of things as well, like, you know, um, like forming relationships. You know, do you sort of form a relationship um, the same way a straight couple would? You know, there's like emotion and love and um, understanding, etc., etc. Or then, you know, it, it, would that not be masculine and should it just be a process of um, you know, physical relationships? Um, Obviously, I, you know, that uh, wasn't for me. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, if, if you're gay, you're gay, and you sort of, like, form relationships the same way as uh, everybody else does. So that, that was my decision on that one. Um, but there's loads of thoughts about masculinity, and, um, you know, when you're sort of, like, attracted to other men, it's going to be only natural. So... Um, but so, so I'm there processing all this and it's sort of like making me depressed in the process. I'm heading on a downward spiral. I'm there, I'm withdrawn from the family because I'm still in my family at this point. I'm with brothers and sister, mother and father. And I'm withdrawn, I'm isolating really, spending you know, more time on my, on my own in my room. The only time I'm sort of like coming down for, you know, to spend time with the family is meal times. And this sort of like, you know, takes its toll on, on the family and, um, and it is starting to cause, cause issues. So I'm there, you know, I'm thinking, well, look, you know, do I come out to my mother? You know, what are the possible consequences? Would I be kicked out? I mean, it's something that you'll probably think about. Um, and even today, I mean, we're talking back in the 80s here, but even today, as far as I understand it, things haven't improved much. Um, but at the end of the day, um, it, it was causing issues with the family and, you know, you know what it's like, you're loyal to your family. So the, um, the common sense thing to do was to approach my mother and um, come out to her. So it's, it was pretty much an ultimatum in because I, I overheard um, the family talking, saying that they were getting pretty cheesed off of it all, really. Um, and um, my father suffered with mental health, and um, <clears throat> this um, was also a factor that was mentioned. So I sort of like um, picked the, the time, and my family um, went off and did their own thing. My mother was alone. I approached my mother and said, you know, I, I think I'm gay. Um, and, and she was great, and she said, oh, it's probably just a phase you're going through. Um, she's probably, you know, well aware that I was holding a lot back, um, emotion-wise. Um, and that was that, basically. I mean, we had a bit of a chat about it. Um, as I say, you know, her opinion was that it was a phase that I was going through. But, you know, on reflection, you know, I, I knew that wasn't true. I knew that I was gay. Uh, and about two weeks later, I think I, I, I said to her, you know, yeah, you know, I know I am gay. And I think this was um, just before my 19th birthday, as I remember it. So, uh, moving back to the, the main topic of this video. Um, I think we've all probably had, had a period of bullying regarding our sexuality uh, and masculinity even, perhaps. Um, and obviously it, it makes us feel less than. It's going to make us feel very self-conscious when we're socially interacting, especially with other guys. Um, so yeah, anything that makes us self-conscious puts us on the back foot and you know, we're there 
probably overthinking everything that we're doing, our mannerisms, etc., etc. And all of this makes us feel awkward and anxious. But I think a lot of it comes down to. Uh, uh, it's quite possible, and I mean, I, I think about myself, and you know, say for me, I, I don't find the average guy attractive at all. It does nothing for me whatsoever. And I, I just interact with them the same way that I would interact with my brothers. <coughs> Sorry. Um, but then obviously, you know, there are the, the odd overweight guy, uh, and you are self conscious, or I, I'm self conscious. And, and being um, attracted to a body type that most people find um, not attractive um, makes me embarrassed as well. And perhaps, you know, it's not just me, maybe um, others who, who are there, they're sort of like trying to fit in um, in the group of men that they might find attractive, feel the same way. They feel a, a bit of embarrassment, self-conscious, anxious, um, and perhaps, it, you know, not even um, comfortable in their own masculinity. Um, yeah, speaking of comfortable in masculinity, I, I, I think for me, the way I interpret it um, with my interac interactions with the average guy, because I mean, you know, I have sort of been like out in work, etc. Um, and you sort of like pick up on, on thoughts and that. But I think a lot of it comes down to um, comfortable in your own masculinity. You know, we might have various interests, but you know, they don't define us, you know, don't define our masculinity. Um, and we should be comfortable with that. And if we're comfortable with that, they tend to be comfortable with it as well. And then also um, in terms of work titles, um, I mean, I, I've always worked in retail and retail is customer focus, uh, customer facing. Um, and obviously, because we're customer facing, you know, we've got to be diverse, we've got to be accepting, we've got to be understanding. And generally, it's like water of a, of a duck's back to them. There are, um, I mean, I've worked in production as well, and then the older, the older guy in production might have a bit of a out-of-date opinion. Um, but then, let's say, if, you, if you're comfortable within yourself, it, it makes no difference whatsoever, really. Um, it only makes a difference if you start overthinking it and, let, you know, let it get to you. Um, I think one way, one way forward possibly, possibly might be just sort of stop judging people on, oh, are they gay or are they straight? Are they straight? You know, do I act this way for you know, when I'm interacting with a gay person? Do I interact this way with a straight person? And just for, think of them as, as a blank canvas, um, converse, be comfortable within yourself. Um, obviously, stay, stay true to your boundaries, um, be true to yourself. Obviously, um, you probably be a bit more um, cagey as to sort of, you know, what you might say and how you might act, etc. But, you know, just converse. I mean, for me, uh, my approach, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, when I think back to my years in retail, uh, you know, I had a, a long-term partner back then. Um, and I would just deal with my sexuality by sort of introducing my partner. Uh, I just mentioned that, you know, it's a he. And it, it was a really easy way of sort of saying, look, I'm gay, rather than, you know, just saying I'm gay and sort of draw attention to the word gay, basically. Um, but we've, we've all got our own way of handling things, our own way of dealing with things. Um, and that there may be many of us who don't you know, feel any anxiousness or awkwardness when dealing with um, or interacting with straight people. Um, but I say, if we think of them as the blank canvas and, and converse and just form an opinion over a period of time, you know, we, we could out, outwardly um, you know, say that we're gay in conversation. Um, you know, it shouldn't be something that we should have to hide. Um, and just watch their reaction accordingly. Um, I mean, that's, that's the way that I've always done it. So, but basically, you know, whatever works for yourself. Um, the, the other thing which could be really useful as well is um, finding a female as un understanding, obviously someone you get along with, uh, and um, you know, if you can find in someone mature and understanding, 
Um, and she could do a lot of the coming out for you and, and she will you know, show you in your best light. You know, she will probably describe you better than you could describe yourself, especially if you're feeling it, um, embarrassed and, and awkward. So, you know, that's something else to be aware of. And, and it's something that's um, pretty common with, with gay people anyway. You know, we, we have our, our female allies. So hopefully this video has been of some use. Um, if it has, uh, and you want to leave comments, please do so. And thank you for watching.